On behalf of Pastor and Lady Ming and the Retrieve Your Life family, we welcome you to Retrieve Your Life Ministries, a church that is looking up, reaching out, and caring for all. Let's go to today's sermon. Where does your heart lie today? God is just so good. I, I, you know, I just, even though we're we getting ready to pray, it's just, I just, I'm just always glad to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Because Amen. God is just so good. <laughs> oh, I'm down, sister. Amen. It's prayer time. You can stay at your seat, so you can make a circle. You can join hands, but whatever you do, whatever you're praying for, give it to God, yes. and leave it at the altar when you give it to Him. Amen. Don't take none back. Don't keep Amen. trying to work on it yourself. Give it to God. Amen. 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 Father God, we come to you this morning as humble as we know how, Heavenly Father. First of all, God, we like to thank you because you're so awesome, Heavenly Father. Lord, we thank you. We invite you in our presence this morning, Lord. Lord, we know you don't need any help, Heavenly Father. You are so awesome, Lord, and we love you, Heavenly Father. Lord, I thank you myself, Heavenly Father. We just want to give you the highest praise, and that's hallelujah, Lord. Yeah. We're still thanking you, Lord, on this day, Heavenly Father, for bringing us a mighty long way. Yes. Lord, you're so good to us. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we ask that you forgive us of everything we've done that's not of you up yes. until this moment, yes. Heavenly Father. Yes. And, Lord, we want to continue to thank you, Lord. We don't want to have give Satan no kind of glory. Not this day, not any day, Heavenly Father, because you are the most powerful God we know. Heavenly Father, we lift, we up, we lift you up, and we praise your name, Heavenly Father. Yes, yes, we ask that yes. you go out into this dying land, Heavenly Father. And, Lord, we ask for a healing, Lord. We ask you to go into the nursing homes, Heavenly Father. We ask that you heal those in the nursing homes, Lord. <coughs> We thank you for the people that's taking care of them, Lord. Yes. Lord, we ask you to go out into the homeless, Heavenly Father, and guide them through that they're going through, Heavenly Father. We ask that you bless them, Lord. Continue to send your people out for them, Heavenly Father. We ask that you go out into the prisons, Lord, and redirect their purposes, Heavenly Father. Lord, we ask that they could continue to serve you, those that's seeking you, Heavenly Father. Yes. And Lord, those that's trying to find their way, we ask for you to give them a guiding light, Heavenly Father. Let them know it's that you that's in charge, Heavenly Father. And those that's looking for a release date, Heavenly Father, we ask that you give it to them, Lord. Heavenly Father, we just ask your presence all over this world, Heavenly yes, Father. Yes. We thank you, Lord. Thank you. Lord, we ask you to bless our president and his family, Heavenly Father. Yes. Lord, we thank you right now, Heavenly Father. We ask that you go into this community right here, Heavenly Father, and bless those people that we're surrounded by, Heavenly yes. Father. Yes. Lord, we ask that you bless them that's protecting your house, Heavenly Father. Lord, we know you are the way, Heavenly Father. We know you can give us everything that we need, Lord. We, I ask that you bless everybody that's under the sound of my voice, Heavenly yes, Father. Yes. Lord, we ask that you bless their homes, Heavenly Father. Yes. Those that have problems, Heavenly Father, we ask that you go in and let them seek you for their problems, Heavenly Father. Stop going out and ask everybody else, Lord. Let them come together in your name, Heavenly Father, and pray to you, Lord, so you can guide those families, Heavenly Father, those husbands those children, those mothers, Heavenly Father. We ask that you bring them back to you, Heavenly Father, and let the glory be given to you, Lord. Lord, we ask that you bless our children, Heavenly yes, Father. Lord, yes. We ask your continuous watch over our children, Heavenly yes, Father. So much is going on with them, Heavenly Father. Yes. They are going through a lot too, Lord, and we want our parents to give their children the understanding of you, Lord. Let yes. them know that it is you that keep holding on, that keep bringing them through each and every day, Lord. We thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we want to ask you to bless our members that's away, Heavenly Father. Yes. Lord, we ask your continuous blessings over them, Heavenly Father. And when they come back, Lord, let them continue to glorify you, Heavenly yes. Father. Lord, we just thank you right now, Lord, because you are awesome, Heavenly Father. Lord, we ask that you just continue to bless our ministry, Lord. Lord, I just thank you right now. You. We lift you up yes. in your son Jesus' name. Jesus. Amen. 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 Grateful. I'm just so grateful. Grateful, grateful, grateful. Grateful. Gratefulness. Grateful. Lord, we just grateful this morning. We're grateful that you're God and that you you just love us so unconditionally. We're just grateful. Grateful. We have so much to be grateful for. You know, we, we, we're all here this morning at, 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 on our own accord. 
We all got here, we, we walked in the door. God allow us to hear his word. We have so much to be grateful for. Clothes on our backs, cars to drive, homes to live in, children who are healthy. We have so much to be grateful for. So much to be grateful for. Even if your child is a dog and he's healthy. We have, I'm telling you, some people that's their children. We, but we have so much to be grateful for. God has been good. God has been so good, sometimes we don't know how to appreciate the goodness that he gives us. We look for all the, the material things and, and all the, you know, the cares and the riches, but we, we forget about just the simplistic things that God provides. And we should be so grateful. Every day we wake up and take another breath, there's a day to be grateful. Don't worry about if your car broke. If your car broke, catch a bus. If your car broke, if you got if you got to leave, take a day off. Amen. 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 Just think about it this way: the car is broke, but you're not. Amen. Amen. So much to be grateful for. I'm just grateful to be here this morning. Come on, man. You know, I'm, 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 I'm getting I'm getting ready to turn sixty. <clears throat> and I, I I'll be sixty this Thursday. And you know, I'm just grateful right now that I'm 59. I'm gonna be even more grateful if he allows me to wake up and see 60. You know, hey, I'm you, it's good, it's good to be in the house of the Lord, but it's also good to get to be a season. Mm. Everybody that says 60. Don't look this good. <laughs> Woo! I, I, I was telling everybody else, I said, you know, I was going, I'm going Chuck City this summer. <laughs> <laughs> right. Going to be Chuck City this summer. You know, because you know what? Let me tell y'all something. Live life like it's your last day on earth. Right. Right. Enjoy this while you can. Yeah. Because it's not going to last forever. That's right. Nobody knows the time, the day, or the hour, or the minute, or the second. Right. But live this life while you got it. Right. Live it for the Lord. Have fun. Enjoy it. Whatever, whatever it is. You know, I hear a lot of people complain about, you know, I don't, I don't get to do this, and I don't get to do that. And, you know, baby, let me tell you something. Just, just wake up, walk around the block, walk around your block, take some deep breaths. And say hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. You know, you want a vacation, take a day off. You want to go somewhere, go to the zoo. I ain't lying. There's a lot of stuff to do right here in the state of Missouri. Go to a winery. Amen. Amen. You know, all you alcoholics. <laughs> <laughs> Call me when you go. <laughs> hey, Joe, I'm just I'm just joking. But I ain't joking about coffee when you go now. Because <laughs> I know CC and Red, I mean William, keep on calling it Red. William, they be, they be exploring Missouri. Amen. Hey, they be, they be all, and they putting this up on Facebook. I'm like, they ain't called a pastor for one. <laughs> they say, would you like to go to the wine? Yeah, I like to go. <laughs> we, we got two pastors. Hey, Amen. Hint, hint. Amen. All you winery folks. Okay. Amen. Because <laughs> y'all know y'all be going out. And just, but I'm just saying, there's so much to do in the state of Missouri. You don't have to leave Missouri. Yeah. If you can afford to leave Missouri, praise the Lord. Yeah. Go to the Ozarks. It's beautiful up there at the lake. Yes, Amen. Amen. Then you get to shopping and everything, you know, then you come back broke, then you come back crying and come to church. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. You've had about that coach first. You know? But I'm just telling you all, have fun. That's what I love to do. Have fun. I'm telling you. I don't care what it is. If it's just if it's just getting up, just just getting in your car and just take a drive. Have some fun. Amen. 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 Then you know how we do it all well then. 
A motorist accidentally hit a, and killed a calf that was crossing the road. Now, feeling guilty about the incident, he asked the foreman how much the animal was worth. About $300 to date, said the foreman. But in six years, it would have been worth $900. So realistically, I'm $900 out of pocket. That's what I want is compensation. The man wrote out a check and handed it to the phone. Here is the check for $900, he said. But it is post dated six years from today. <laughs> hey. Amen. Now go cash that. You know, most of y'all would have just wrote a check and wrote somebody else's name on it. <laughs> Amen. Say it like you mean it. This is my Bible. This is my God. The Word of God in whom I will trust. Amen. Amen. If you would turn your Bibles to the book of Luke, chapter 8, start Luke. Luke. Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Go to the New Testament. That's the that's first book after Malachi was the end of the Old Testament. Matthew, Mark, Luke. Luke chapter 8, starting at verse 11. Luke chapter 8, starting at verse 11. You get there, just say amen. 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 Luke chapter 8, starting at verse 11. Amen. How many of y'all knew that Luke was a doctor? <coughs> amen. amen. Read your history. Read your history. Read your history. Amen. Shanti, you can see it in that little bit about it. Yeah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Don't good eyes. That's the young eyes. See? You get these eyes, you're going to need one of these big old things. What's the big print in it? <laughs> Amen. Amen. We there? Amen. And I'm reading out the NIV. The Bible reads as thus. This is the meaning of the parable. The seed is the word of God. Those along the path are the ones who hear, and then the devil comes and takes away the word from their hearts so that they may not believe and be saved. Those on the rock are the ones who receive the word with joy when they hear it, but they have no root. They believe for a while, but in a time of testing, they fall away. The seed that fell among thorns stands for those who hear, but as they go on their way, they are choked by life's worries, riches, and pleasures, and they do not mature. But the seed on good soil mm -hmm. stands for those with a noble and good heart who hear the word, retain the word, and by persevering, produce a crop. You may be seated in the presence of God. One of the best known parables is the sower and the soil. That's told by our Lord uh, Jesus. And as y'all know, it was in red, it's Jesus speaking. In Luke in chapter 8, starting in verse 5 through 8. I, I didn't read you in 5 through 8, because that's what he told in the parable. What I read you from 11 through 15 is what the parable means. The parable itself, it says, A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path. It was trampled on, and the birds of the air ate it up. Some fell on rock. And when it came up, the plants withered because they had no moisture. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up with it and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on good soil. It came up and yielded a crop a hundred times more than was sown. So Jesus explains the meaning of this parable. When the soil went out to sow, he sowed the word of God according to verse 11. Amen? So the word of God is sown when a person hears the word preached. Understand it. The word of God is sown when a person listens to the word of God read. The word of God is sown when a person reads the word of God for him or herself. You have got to know the word for yourself. Amen? Amen. So when the word of God is sown, it falls into one of four types of soil. Amen? Amen. And the soil will be symbolic for the heart. Because that's what we're really looking at this morning is the heart. So the four types of heart is where the word where the word falls. So this morning, really, what I want to talk to you about is, where does your heart lie today? Where does your heart lie today? 
Point number one. Let's talk about the four types of heart. Point number one, and the first heart, we're going to talk about the stubborn heart. Who's on the path are the ones who hear, and then the devil comes and take away the word from their hearts so that they may not believe and be saved. There is no time or, or, or for our or, or, or true interest in the word of God. People really don't want to hear the word of God. They really don't. There's, there are so many people that are just so stubborn when it comes to hearing the word of God. They don't want to hear the word. They don't want to read the word. They don't want to be around the word. Because people are just stuck. They feel that, you know, I, I don't want to be around you know, all you Christian folk, all you godly people. And you got some Christians that's like that too. Amen. <laughs> they just faking the funk. <laughs> they, you know, when, when you talk about people being stubborn, how many of y'all know some stubborn folks? Amen. 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 You know, I know me, I, I, I can be stubborn. I can be very stubborn at times. Amen. I know I can. And I know that I have a stubborn heart at times. Amen. Amen. You know, when it comes to talking about the stubborn heart, it's from the poor pen. To the hell. Amen. Smart church. Smart church. Because every last one of us got some stubbornness inside of us. Amen. Amen. We can be some stubborn folks. But you know, you know, like they say about the, about the, about the little kids in there, about the donkey. <laughs> I was going to say something else. Amen. <laughs> But we got to worry about the children, the children. Some of us are stubborn as a donkey is. Because you can pull and pull on that donkey, and he is not going to move. He's not going to move till he is ready to move. Just like humans are. People can pull on you and bring you, and, and you get in the word, and you hear the word, and God is just keep trying to pull you and pull you closer and closer to him. And Jesus said, come on, man, I got you. Pulling you closer and closer, and you're doing like this. Uh-uh, uh-uh. I'm, I'm having fun over here with the devil. I don't want to be, I don't want nothing. We stubborn when it comes to God. We stubborn when it comes to the word. We don't want to, we don't want no peace of God because we have too much over here with the devil. I can get high with the devil. I can get drunk with the devil. Huh? I can sell some dope with the devil. I can do all kinds of evil things with the devil. I can murder with the devil. I can lie with the devil. I can cheat with the devil. We can do all things with the devil. Because we stuck. And God keeps trying to pull us and pull us to him. And we just standing there just like the donkey. We planted and just not going to move. You need to get your little donkey tail up <laughs> and get the move. That's right. See, some of us need some of us just need to carry it in front of us so we can be lean. <coughs> See, we're gonna follow something that's why we're gonna follow food. Get this. We'll follow food, but we won't follow God. Mm. Stubborn heart. And I want you this morning to understand. That there is no time for stubbornness. We have got to start understanding the word of God, appreciating the word of God. Just like he said in the word, they're on the path of the ones who hear, because a lot of us hear, and then the devil comes and takes away the word from their heart. You let say men. Yes, Come on, man. Some of y'all brought him in here. Amen. You know he rolled over. He know he rolled down here with you. <laughs> Amen. You mean to have him in the trunk, he was in the back seat, he might have been driving, I don't know. <laughs> but we bring the devil. Because we stuck. Some of us woke up this morning going, oh, I don't want to go to church. Come on, come on, I want to go to church. I don't want to go to no church. Church for what? Why don't you go to church for? What you need to lay there for? <laughs> Who woke you up? Amen. 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 Oh, oh, I'm sorry, excuse me, you woke up by yourself. You have that kind of power. Hmm. Did you know what? Come and heal me. Because you must be Jesus. Stubbornness. We are stubborn people. And we have got to be more aware and cognizant of what the Word of God is telling us and stop letting Satan come into our hearts and take it away. God puts you, gives you joy in your heart 
Stop letting things come in there and just steal it. How many of y'all let people steal your joy? Amen. 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 God gives you joy and he fills you up with joy. One day you can just wake up just so full of joy and everything, and I don't know where you go or whatever happens, but you, let, you come in contact with somebody, and next thing you know, your joy is gone. Right. And you pissed off for the rest of the day. You angry with everybody because of that one individual. You let somebody steal your joy. Don't worry about the man. <laughs> you let somebody steal your joy. And wasn't, even, and wasn't even worried about the consequence of the joy that God gave you. You let say come in, seek, kill, and destroy, and that's what he did. That's right. Because they said that's his job. He's, he, his job is to devour you. And when we give him that opportunity to steal our joy that God gave us, mm. see, when it comes to the devil, you're not stuck. Come on. But when it comes to God, you want to be stuck. Come on. Come on. Uh-oh. We'll give in to Satan. Come on. But we won't give in to God. That's right. <laughs> that sounds like an oxymoron around to me. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to figure that out. How can we give in so much to, to, the, to the devil and give so little to God? Mm-hmm. Point number two. Get off your stubbornness. <laughs> Shallow heart. Oh, because some of us are shallow. Mm. There is an instant joyous response to the preaching or, or reading of God's word. However, it is surface level response. Surface level response. The minute something arises in the way of temptation, the results of the seed being planted fall away. The minute y'all get tempted, let me back that up. The minute we get tempted, well, I got to throw myself in there too. The seed falls away. The one that was planted. And it falls away because of our shallow hearts. In verse 13, he said, Those on the rock are the ones who receive the word with joy when they hear it, but they have no root. See? First of all, when the seed is planted and we hear the word, and then we go away, and once we hear the word, when we go out, but we have not, we have no roots. We haven't, haven't grown roots into the word. We're not grounded. We're not stand, We're not stable. We, you know, we can be moved. We can be pushed out the way. Case point. I'm a palm tree. A hurricane comes, and it blows, and it blows. Winds 160, 75 miles an hour. And the tree, the palm tree, it, 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 it's just going back and forth, and back and forth, and back and forth. When the hurricane leaves, the palm tree is still standing. Some of us need to get some palm tree mentality. We need to have a, a palm tree heart because we, we're so shallow when it comes that when we hear the word, we're not rooted in the word, so it's easy for Satan to come along and just blow us away. That's right. Satan, just like the, the wolf in, the, in Little Red Riding Hood. Y'all all read the story. Sometimes he comes and he huffs and he puffs. Blows the house down. See, you got to get a brick house. Stop making, stop, stop making your heart with, uh, with straw. Stop making your heart with sticks. And, and get some, some solid foundation in your heart. Stop having that shell heart and have a, have a strong, solid foundation in your heart. So when Satan comes along and he huffs and he puffs, yes, yes. you're like a palm tree. You're rooted. Yeah. You've grown. You're strong. You will not waver. You're not going anywhere. You're going to stay rooted in his word. Yes, yes. Oh. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We hear the word. We don't do nothing with the word. <laughs> we, don't, we hear the word. We don't follow the word. We hear the word, we don't obey the word. I can go on and on about what we don't do with the word. Because we hear the word, you don't just hear the word on Sunday mornings. You hear the word every day if you read it every day. Amen, somebody. Amen. Because if you're reading the word, you're hearing the word of God each and every day of your life. That's why it's important, I keep telling you all, read the word every day. 
I don't care if it's just one verse. Study the word. Meditate on that word on that word every single day. Get strong. Get rooted in the word. So that when Satan comes in here, because Satan is coming. Understand that. He is coming. But when the storm blows, you got to be rooted in the word of God. You got to stand strong, stand firm. You might wave a little bit. You might even bend over to the left. You might even go backwards and forwards. But stay rooted in the word. Be like the palm tree. Because it's gonna be storms gonna come in your life, they're gonna be more than 175 miles an hour. Yes, yes. You're gonna have some storms that's gonna knock you down. Yeah. Huh? Yes. You're gonna have some storms that's gonna blow you over. You're gonna have some storms that are gonna make you feel like, oh, it's all it's lost. We just don't know what to do. But if you stand rooted in the word, all right. God will make a way. I'm telling you. If you stand rooted in the word and not have a shallow heart, God will make a way. Amen. Amen. Because some of you have already experienced some of the miracles that God has already performed in your life. Oh, yes. We see miracles in our life and don't even recognize it's a miracle. Come on, Pastor. You want to see a miracle this morning? I, I'm asking, do y'all want to see a miracle this morning? I'm going to show you a miracle. Y'all want to see a miracle? Yes. Look next to the person next to you. Amen. You just seen a miracle. All you got to do is look at the person next to you. Because how many of us have been through something? How many of us have been through some storm? I ain't going to say a, a storm, some storms. Huh? Some of y'all have had some typhoons, some hurricanes, some tornadoes. Yeah, some tsunamis. Amen. But if you went through all of that, and you still standing, come on, man. It's a time to be grateful. Yes. 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 See, this, this, that's why it's time. See, that's why it's time to, to, to strengthen up your heart. Yes. You know, sometimes you know how you know how you lift weights and everything. You get, you know, try to get your strength up. You know, get your muscles all in tune and everything. Mm -hmm. You got to strengthen your heart muscle. Cause the heart is just that. It's only a muscle. I hope y'all know that. Your heart is only a muscle, but it needs to be strengthened up too. That's right. Spiritually. Spiritually, because some of us are weak in the heart when it comes to spirituality. That's why our hearts are so shallow. Amen. Amen. Point number three. Let me let y'all go. The strangled heart. In verse fourteen, he said, "It's Jesus now. Stay with me. The seed that fell among thorns stands for those who hear, but as they go on their way, they are choked by life's worries." riches and pleasures, and they do not mature. Mm. See, this is where the seed starts to grow, but it's strangled by the cares, riches, and, 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 and pleasures of this life that we live in right now, on this on this earth. See, so many people worried about how much money they got. Living in a, a, a brand new or big old house. Huh? And all the pleasures they go with. We so focused on all the wrong things instead of the right thing that God has already planted the seed in us. And you know what? You got to understand one thing. You're still growing. Right. You're not grown yet. You're still growing. I don't care if you're 60, 70, 80, you're still growing. Right. Right. Because you are the seed that he planted. And we're still growing. But we, 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 we sometimes we have a strangled heart. We let, we let Satan come in and just strangle our heart. Once again, here he comes. And he chokes us. He chokes you just long enough to where you think life is, is ending, but it's not. He chokes you just long enough where you give in to him. And now you want uh, Mercedes Benz, $1.3 million house, party every night. Swimming pool parties, there's 2,500 people in your house, girls all over the place, you don't even know who they are. 
And then some people say, oh, that's the life. <laughs> that's living. Is it really? It, it, just because you got money, is that is that really living? That's right. See, you party so hard, you can't come to church on Sunday. Right. You, you, you're rich because of God. But how many of us give back? See, you don't have to be rich to honor God. First of all, you need to understand one thing. You're already rich. You're already rich. He continues to provide. You don't need a mansion like everybody else. If God wanted you to have a mansion, better trust me and believe me, you'd have one. We need to live where he has us. Bloom where you're planted. Come on, man. Come on, Come on. You hear what I'm saying? Amen. Bloom where you're planted. If you got a thirty-five thousand dollar house, okay, make it look like a sixty thousand dollar house. Come on, man. Bloom where you're planted. Grow. Make your house look. You, you, you're geniuses. You're innovative. You can make your house look like a million dollar home. If that's what you want, if that's what's important to you. Don't want your house is clean, ain't got no cockroaches. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. You know, ain't dirty all the time, food all over the place, clothes all over the floor. Toys and everything you gotta understand. We have to you know you got a little kids and everything, they just crazy. So <laughs> Yeah, look over them. Make them clean up. They still don't pay you no attention. <laughs> I'm talking about my grandchildren. Amen. You tell them to clean up, they look at you like, ah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> yeah I think I'm playing. They just go back in the other room and do what do. Come back over there in the other room with a motor. I tell them to get out, they come back with something else. <laughs> <laughs> but you gotta have a clean house. Yeah. And see, y'all missed it. Y'all missed what I just said. Y'all missed the point. But I said you gotta have a clean house. I wouldn't talk about your, your that, that that house you live in. That's right. I'm talking about your heart. That's right. And I said no cockroaches. Oh, some of y'all got cockroaches running all up and out of you. Come on, man. I said cockroaches are filthy. Thank you. Cockroaches are filthy. They're filthy beings. They're filthy. And some of us ain't, ain't that's just all we got. That's all we got to give is cockroaches. But we just that filthy. Our heart is just that nasty because it's been strangled, it's been choked. And life has been choked out of you by <coughs> Satan. Mm -hmm. We have got to learn how to fight back and not be choked and not be worrying about the riches and pleasures of this life. This life we live is temporary. This is not your permanent home. Mm -hmm. right. You want a mansion? You got one. It already got your name on it. But you just gotta wait till it's your time to get there. Yeah. Jesus done already told you, in my father's house are many mansions. Yeah. Yeah. You already got a reservation if you get right while you're down here. Yeah. See, some of us don't pay attention to the word of God and what he's trying to tell us. Get some get right. I already got you. I already got your name on a mansion. Yeah, come on, Pastor. Why do you think the Bible tells you that the streets are paved with gold? What do you think heaven look like? You think it's just a bum city? <laughs> if the Bible says it got streets paved with gold and jewels and it's full of mansions, why are you worrying about what you got down here? You better try to get right and get to know him so that you can get what's, what is reserved for you in heaven. Because you're going to leave this place. Understand that. You know, how many of y'all ever had a temporary job on you know, one of them temp jobs? Amen. <laughs> See, now how many of y'all understand you got a temp life? Amen. 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 Because, you know, just like that temporary job is not permanent. That's right. This job here that we got right now, this ain't permanent. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. You only down here for a temporary time period. Yeah. 
That's right. And when you get there, I hope you have gotten right down here and that you didn't let the devil strangle your life so you got so focused on the riches and wait. Come on, man. Because ain't no mansions in hell. <laughs> ain't no streets paved with gold. Ain't no air conditioning. It's hot as hell. Yes. H-E-L. What did they say? H-E double hockey stick? Yeah. H-E double hockey sticks. Because when that seed starts to grow, like I keep telling y'all, you're, 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 you're still growing. You're still, he's planted the seed, and we're still growing. Because we have to learn and hear the word of God. How many of y'all are, are reading the word on a daily basis so you can get to know the word for yourself? Amen. You have got to read the word. I don't know how many times I got to tell y'all this. And y'all come here every Sunday, and you need to read the word every day. Every day. Every day. That's right. Amen. Amen. Not someday. Er, every day. You know, y'all y'all understand that part. So when I say every, I guess that's why you don't read it. I'm gonna say every day. Every day. That's right. I hope y'all get that. Read the word every day. <laughs> oh, I said I had James Brown tell y'all that. <laughs> Point number four, we going home. So miss a part. We have got to be submissive, you all. Now, in verse 15, he said, but the seed on good soil, so here we go. The seed on the good soil, it stands for those with a noble and good heart who hear the word, retain the word, and by persevering, they produce a good crop. The submissive heart is more than a hearer of the word. Amen. Amen. The submissive heart, the submissive heart, he is also, I'm just going to rephrase that. He or she is also a doer of the word. Because they keep it, and they bear fruit. Huh? Now, where does the word fall in your life? Huh? What kind of heart does it hit? Does it hit the strangled heart, the shallow heart, or the stubborn heart? Or do you have a submissive heart? You need to ask yourself that question sometime. Let me, let me rephrase that. Not sometime, but every day. You know, ask yourself about these four hearts, four types of hearts. And then, you know, if you if you if you got a stubborn heart, a shallow heart, or a strangled heart, Start working on that submissive heart. Start working on being submissive to the word of God. You submissive to everybody else. You submissive to that, 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 that person you live with. You submissive to your children. You submissive to the people on your job. <coughs> How come we can't be submissive to the word of God? The one, the, it's, it's, oh, it's something I don't think I'll ever understand is, we can be submissive to everybody else, but uh, except for the Creator. We give everybody else all kind of glory, but the Creator. When it comes to being submissive, we get here. We go. We get go back to point number one. We get that stubborn heart because we don't want to submit to nobody. You hear what I'm saying? You know, is it like, you know, most people read the word of God and they say what well, they say, they say, well, Pastor the Bible says, you know, wives submit to your husband. And wives first thing, I ain't no but that not, not me. I ain't submitting to nobody. So you reading the word all wrong. Because if you keep reading it, it says husbands, submit to your wife. So they they read that one point and they stop right there and go on the tangent. <laughs> And we got the rest of the word. That's why I say, if you don't read the word and know the word for yourself, you'll never have any understanding of the word. You'll never be able to submit to the word because you have no understanding of the word. You must read the word in order to get understanding of the word of God. In order for you to be submissive, you have got to have a closeness and a oneness with God. Because you have to learn and understand that you have to be submissive to him. Not to nobody else. First and foremost, you need to be submissive to God. Amen. First and foremost. Because, see, I mean, this is how easy it is. Because if you're submissive to God, it's easy for you to be submissive to your parents, 
Amen. Because you know a lot of us, we talk back. A lot of, a lot of kids today got a lot of mouth. Amen. And see, parents today don't know how to don't know how to deal with that. Oh, put them in time out. Time out. Yeah, okay. I'm gonna time you out already. <laughs> now I'll wake you up when it's time in. <laughs> you gonna get some time out. Amen. 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 You hear what I'm saying? Yes. Because you know, the kids not submissive. But see if you submissive to God and you got a oneness and a, on the same accord with God and you know who he is, and you already submissive to God as an individual, you're gonna be submissive to your parents. Because you're going to respect them because you respect God. That's right, that's right. Amen? Amen. Amen? But see, we don't teach our children that because we don't submit. Because we don't submit to God. Yeah. There's so many parents out there today, they talking about their children, ain't this, ain't that. Well, they only doing it because you ain't taught them nothing. That's right. You haven't taught them how to be submissive. Because you got a strangled heart or a stubborn heart. Come on now. <coughs> mm. Come on, come on. Ooh, Lord Jesus. Oh, you have a shallow heart. Yes. And now your kids have grown up to have the same kind of heart that you have. That's right. And now they're grown and married, and that woman or that man that they with don't know how to deal with that individual because they, they, they got the same thing as you have. It's just a cycle. And we always talk about generational curses that need to be broken. Well, break it today. If you, if you, if you got any one of these hearts, have this a submissive heart. Work on being submissive to the word of God. Work on being submissive to what he wants you to do. So that you can be submissive to anything else in life. You'll be more respectful. I'm, you know, there's a lot of people that I do know that are doing great, great jobs with their children. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. You know, it's an accomplishment for, for, for a child today to graduate from high school. Yeah. I'm here to tell you. Because yeah. high school today ain't no joke. Yeah. I, you know, I, I, don't, I, don't think I, I don't think I can be part of this, uh, this generation. Oh, no. You know, I, I've been, I've been the guy that's expelled. I don't know how many times, because you're going you're gonna to be fighting all the time. They're doing all kinds of schools, schools, things in school today. We got schools closing up. We have never, never, ever taught our children to be submissive, because a lot of people have never learned to be submissive. We sit here today and we talk about Sumner, Beaumont, and all these schools, Normandy, all these schools that's closing or whatever. Sumner got all kinds of things going on. They're shooting, they're stabbing, they, they, you know, right in school. They were doing the same thing in Beaumont. Beaumont was, was crazy at one time. And then, you know, we, 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 we're talking about, well, they ain't getting no education there. Well, you didn't talk that fool how to get one. And then I call them fools. But that's what they are. They've never learned how to be submissive. Because if you're not submissive and respectful in your own home, what you don't think they're going to do when they go to school? When a teacher tries to correct them, what do you think they're going to, what the teacher's going to get back? And some of our children are so, so angry and, 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 and haven't learned anything that when they get to high school or whatnot, they don't even have them, they don't know how to read. They have no math skills, no English skills. All they got is tech skills. <laughs> and he bots. I ain't lying. They take a test and they put YW, or IJS, right, right. SMH. Yeah, you shaking your head because you don't know the answer. <laughs> if our children don't know how to be submissive, it's not nobody's fault but parents. Quit blaming schools. Quit blaming churches. People talk, the churches need to get more involved. You need to get more involved in your own child's life. That's right. Mm -hmm. If you get yourself together and start submitting to God, then your children will learn how to submit to God. That's right. 
if you cure your heart, then maybe they will learn how to not have the same heart that you have. Because if you're always angry, what do you think that child gonna grow up to be? Angry. If you're always with some man that's beating on you, what do you think your son gonna grow up to be? <laughs> if you got men coming in and out of your house, what do you think your, 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 your daughter gonna do? Come on, man. <laughs> Everybody got a different daddy. What do you think your daughter going to do? Same. Oh. See, then we blame everybody else. Uh -huh. People need to really understand, you better get some God in your life. Amen. For real. And for you Texas, F or F or. <laughs> Oh, this is some real stuff right here. This ain't no joke. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. That's why I tell you, what does your heart lie today? What kind of heart do you have today? See, it's time to check yourself. For real. We all know what kind of heart we have. For real. Get it together. Clean your act up. That's right. That's right. Read the word every day. Even if you don't want to. Right. Read one verse. That's all I ask. One verse. Okay. You can read one verse in less than 10 seconds. Okay. So if you start reading one verse, you might start, you might start liking the word of God. Yeah, you might want some more. Yes. Ain't no might to it. Keep on reading. You're gonna, you're gonna read more. Then you're going to learn how to be submissive. Then you're going to get rid of these other three. Because you're going to be able to come back to them when he comes knocking at your door. That's right. See, God has planted a good seed, you all, in each and every last one of us. God has planted, because God is good. God has planted a good seed. We're the ones that's allowing Satan to come in and choke the life out of us and strangle us and give us stubborn hearts, make us look like donkeys, huh? He's the one that keeps our hearts shallow because we let him in. We need to get it right and start learning how to be submissive. Get right, start reading, reading that word of God. Hearing the word of God, but what are you doing with the word of God? The word of God is preached to you, but what are you doing with it? Don't, like we said, don't just be a hearer of the word. Be a doer of the word. Because the word requires action. The word of God requires action. Yes, yes. Amen? Amen. It's a wrap.